I am Caroline Dixon. I'm the Drama Life Prison Wife. I'm the legally blind artist that is rapping and painting for justice. <gasps> Hoping <laughs> to see justice before all face to black. Yes, it's your girl, Cadillac. Anyways, coming through 3 a.m. in the morning. Hey, y'all remember that song back in the day? I'd probably be going from um from three to maybe five. I don't know. I don't know how long this is gonna take, but y'all remember that song? Five o'clock in the morning. Where you gonna be? Outside on the corner. You better get yourself together. <laughs> Anyways, tonight. I'm gonna be kind of far from the camera, so if you do come through and put comments, cause I was gonna do it unlisted so I could release it later, but I don't know. I don't I'm I don't know if the algorithm would support it more, like if it was, I don't know. So, but what we are going to do, I got, as you can see, I got my workspace together, boo. Yes, I got my little tablet. First, I gotta show y'all. My PJs, yes, the noodles. I am the OG prison wife, and y'all know, unfortunately, every um, incarcerated citizen, this is their main diet. Most most times, Marcello, he makes the um, noodle, noodle sandwiches. I ain't never heard of that, but that's something they got going on. Um, I got this, when, and then it got the pants to it, too. See? The pants match. Oh, and I just opened it. I did not know that the shirt was in there. Girl, cool. How cool is that? But I got it because um, earlier this week, a childhood friend of Money's gave birth. She, get this, this is crazy. She is a twin. Her mother had two sets of twins. There were um, the ones that were money age, and then it was another set that was um, my my little sister's age. They was a bit older than the younger ones that would have every weekend, money and all her friends would have um, sleepovers and stuff. And we'll play, we'll do all kinds of stuff. Back then I was doing Project Reach the World, so I'll be painting and staying up all night, especially when like Tom Joyner came and stuff like that girl i'll be painting but i always painted for justice i would go meet um famous people i would draw them and then try to get my story of my husband being wrongfully convicted excessively sentenced to anybody and everybody that came around florida right so um she had twins herself so she's a twin she had twins and she has a set of sisters that are twins so twins just run all up and through this family she was the last of the twins so it's four it's the two sets of twins she was the last to have her baby and she went out with a bang girl she had twins so um they were born really small they were only like one is three pounds one is almost four pounds um and money wanted me to come and see them um i grew up they grew up well we really it's almost like me and money grew up together girl because that's all i had when my husband was wrongfully convicted and taken from our family i only had our daughter right and um her friends would love to be around me. Like I was the mama that everybody had to go over <laughs> Miss Keto's house. Um, so I came up there seeing her um, babies. They are in the NICU because, you know, they're so little and tiny. And the NICU had these pajamas and it was like, take them. What else we can do with them? Girl, this is a blessing because this speaks exactly to me. The OG person wife. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to listen to, y'all know that um, I've been covering the last two weeks, um, the hunger strike of C murder, um, Corey Miller, we really want to refer to him more as Corey Miller. I have been covering um, his hunger strike to bring attention to the um, conditions in Louisiana state prison, not, I keep saying that, Louisiana state's prisons. And he also is 
maintaining his innocence, saying that he has been wrongfully convicted. So as a woman that has been fighting for her wrongfully convicted husband for, get this, 21 plus years, come this Easter, right around the corner when our baby granddaughter turns one, it will be 21 years since my husband lost his trial and was snatched out of our family. My granddaughter now is 11 months old and she's just about the same age that money was when her father was snatched away. Money was actually nine months going on 10 months. Um, and he bought her Easter dress and with hopes of beating trial and coming on home and continuing life, instead he lost his rigged up trial and he never was free again. I have maintained and me and my husband, Marcello, hashtag free Marcello, hashtag free Corey Miller, hashtag purple union. Anyways, we have kept our family together through visits all over the state of Florida. Florida does not have conjugal visits. So it's been regular family visits, um, travel. I've spent bukus of money on um phone calls out the yin yang, travel, got to keep him fed, money on his books, um, trying to get up lawyer money. I was the only one to get him a bond because he was wrongfully arrested when our daughter was only two months old. Um, I got his bond and I paid his bond. And because of that bond, my family, our daughter, was able to um, form a bond with her father before he was taken away on this wrongful conviction. So as I started to watch um, and learn about Corey Miller's case, watching video after video, I realized that they have been incarcerated about the same amount of time. Marcello, my husband, and Corey Miller. Oh, that's bright, girl. <laughs> My, I'm sorry, y'all. I'm legally blind. I just turned that ring light on. So maybe I'll turn it on when I go sit down. <laughs> but right here, that is blinding me. But um, yeah, so I'm going to work on some artwork. And we are going to listen to the playlist I have been working on. Thank you, everybody that has been watching these videos. Um, and let's get into it, girl. Okay, so how we gonna do this? This is the first time I ain't never did nothing like this, girl. So I got, y'all know, I'm an artist. And I don't never finish my work. <laughs> Every now and then I'll finish a piece. So we're gonna be working on some pieces. Money has been begging me to. It's these two pieces I'm supposed to do on this blackboard of... Uh, our granddaughter, Money wants Money is our daughter, me and Marcello's daughter. She's 21 years old. Um, so she wants me to do one of her and then one of our granddaughter, Princess, on the other one so they can sit like side by side. Okay, so I'm going to work on that. And then I also, I don't know how long it's going to take us to go through the playlist. So we may not finish tonight. I could do another live another day. Girl, I just got off of work. I work at a theme park, girl. I'm tired. I'm about going to bed. But um, anyways, so this is a little bunny rabbit butt. <laughs> and the only reason I got this is because our granddaughter was um, born, which is crazy. She was born last year that friday no she was born saturday morning it was early saturday morning late friday night so it and she came home on that sunday which was easter sunday so it's crazy our daughter went into the hospital on that friday she was going to bed that saturday in labor and pain or whatever and then she came home uh, with our granddaughter on easter and then that was my first short that I released that actually got some traction. And it was called, We Got a Baby for Easter. <laughs> so that's why I got the bunny rabbit. But we are readying ourselves for Miss Princess's first birthday party. Okay, so let's get into playing the playlist. I'm sorry to do a whole long intro. Um, 
but let's get into playing this playlist of Corey Miller, um, his case. And then I go into talking about wrongful convictions and how and this, how this can happen because I feel a lot of people do not know the law. They do not know the system whatsoever. They just blindly trust and believe that anybody that's in prison needs to be there. And they shouldn't have did what they did. And the cliche things like don't do the crime if you can't do the time. So let's go ahead and get this playlist started. And then we're going to get to drawing. Oh, my contact. <laughs> I'm sorry. We were supposed to get straight to drawing, but as soon as I mention something about drawing, my contact is fluttering and it hurts. Oh, like I said, I am the legally blind artist. I have a rare eye disease called keratoconus, and I am going to require cornea surgery, which I need a cornea transplant. And I'm hoping to get my darn husband home before that happened, girl. Okay, let's play the playlist and let's get to drawing. I guess I'm far back. Okay, starting from the beginning, turn this all the way up. Hope you can hear. Guys, what it is, it is your girl, Cadillac. Yes, I'm Cadillac Dixon. Okay. I'm going to join my life prison life. I'm the legally blind artist that is rapping and things for justice. Girl, I'm hoping, <gasps> hoping, girl, to see justice before it all makes to blood. Yes, it's your girl, Cadillac. Anyways, um, just heading in to um, this event that's going on. Um, and on my way over here, I heard the story break about Masterpiece. Trying to murder. set it up. Um, see Murder. Y'all know See Murder was real famous, like, 90s going on to 2000s. To be honest, I think See Murder has been in prison as long as Marcello. And they're saying that See Murder is wrongfully convicted. And it's like... Now he's going through some health issues and stuff like that, so they're calling on um, people in Hollywood to help him. And then also, your brother famous, like, I'm thinking if Master P can't free C. Murder, how the heck is Cadillac going to free Martello Jackson? You know what I mean? But it's not, my fight is not only for Martello Jackson. I am for prison reform and criminal justice reform. So when I get home, girl, I am going to review that video so that it gives just a tad bit more reach than anybody else that is um, YouTuber. I'm going to send like a um, comment or something to Mr. Willie D if he can review it because I know he be on that justice stuff. But we all together got to bring justice. It can't be when I need justice, you just look at me all sideways. But when you need justice, you look around for somebody to help you. We gotta help each other, or else, I mean, it's not gonna happen. All right, guys, it's your girl, Cadillac. Guys, what it is, it's your girl, Cadillac. Yes, I'm Cadillac Dixon. I'm the drama life, prison life. I'm the legally blind artist that is rapping and paints for justice. <gasps> Hope it, girl. To see justice before all face to bleed. Yes, it's your girl, Cadillac. Anyways, I told y'all I was going to bring this story to you guys when I get home. And um, I just want to listen to it with you so that this can spread the message um, about wrongful convictions, right? So it's not just Mr. Marcello Jackson. Um, it is somebody else claiming that they have um, a wrongful conviction. And I believe, whether wrongful or not, I believe they should be heard out. Because how could you ever discover if somebody's wrongfully convicted if you won't listen to their story? So let's listen to this man's story. Okay, so here it is brought to you by Hip Hop uncensored we're going to be reviewing their video it is devastating news just leaked about master p's brother c murder now when i heard that girl i was like oh, holding my breath i'm like oh is he like the way they worded that like girl but okay let's listen to this okay you know, my 
right, so earlier today, I'm checking my emails as I do earlier, and I get a message from C Murder, aka Corey Miller's publicist, crying out. This is the picture of my daughter that I'm going to, write, to draw. I'm going to kind of, you know, get to the point, then I'll give you guys, you know, exactly what she wrote to me, word for word, right? Well, they are concerned about the health of Corey Miller, and at this point, he's not in grave condition, but it's getting worse, progressively worse by the day. Now, she went on to say, solitary confinement. Recently, Mr. Miller passed out. He received no follow-up medical care in response to this event. And because Mr. Miller asked for and did not receive an investigation of circumstances of his passing out, he was placed in solitary confinement. Now, in retaliation for his health crisis, Corey Miller continues to suffer. Now, you heard that word retaliation. They retaliate all the time. There are certain rights. When you go to prison, you are still a citizen. That part. <laughs> You're still a citizen. That's why I call prisoners, people like to call them inmates. I call them incarcerated citizens. Still citizens. Free citizens, incarcerated citizens, returning citizens, all still citizens. You don't lose your citizenship because you're incarcerated, which means you still have rights. You still have civil rights. You still have just the right because you're freaking there are human rights, right? Um, but those tend to get... Rights are only as good as You can push the, I, I can't quite find the right phrase to say, but they're only good if you can enforce them. Just having rights doesn't give you anything. We all have rights, but we all get violated. Uh, many of us get violated on a daily basis. And those behind bars really get violated on a daily basis. Um, because there's who's going to enforce the rights. That's where um, it gets like kind of, you know. So there's a lot of things that happen wrong behind those bars. And if you try your way to alleviate it, it's through the, um, I know here in Florida DLC, it's through the grievance process. Well, when you write a grievance, they can retaliate against you. Y'all already know. We just did that ourselves, like, went through that ourselves. I, my husband wrote a grievance on an officer. When I came to visitation, they tried to retaliate against him. And they was like, well, she's been the only one here visiting, <coughs> coming to see him, visiting him, holding him down. So the best way to get revenge on him is to cut the tie, to cut his support system, which is me. Cut me off, and then he has no support. That's the worst way to, you know, get at him. So they went on to basically set me up. And... Y'all, just check out that story time. I'll link it in the description box because it's not about that. But upon them setting me up, they wanted to search my vehicle unlawfully. I refused. Because I refused, they terminated our visits. We raised our child together through prison visits. That was all we had. That was our lifeline. And they, that quit cut it off and laughed as I went off, um, drove off crying, right? So they retaliate. When you report any misconduct, <clears throat> and anyway, their misconduct usually is upheld because people tend to not see people in prison as human. And the thing is, just because you're in prison does not mean you were rightfully convicted. There's so many wrongfully convicted people and over-sentenced people um, that as well as a wrongful conviction to be sentenced to more time than you should be. 
So it's a, many people that shouldn't even be there in those circumstances. So because we don't have everyone like... See the eyes. Everything, because you cannot bet your bottom dollar on what they doing, you can't just say they deserve it because they shouldn't have did what they did. You don't know if they did what they did. You know, a conviction does not mean that is the right person that did whatever crime. That's just mean, that just means that they closed the case saying that it, it was that party. But as you will see in C. Murder's case, and also in Marcello's case, when things arise, that bring up reasonable doubt because you're not supposed to come to a conviction of guilty if there's reasonable doubt. Okay, that would alleviate a lot of wrongful convictions, but they don't do that. That's the way it's laid out all nice and pretty, but they don't necessarily play out the court case in the way that it should be. You know, they cut too many corners. They make too many shortcuts. They jump to too many conclusions. They can't, they, they decide it's one person and they stay on that one person. They take out too many puzzle pieces. They hide stuff. They add stuff. They suppress. So when you're doing all of that, I have a saying, the truth needs no manipulation. The truth is as is. You don't need to touch it. You don't need to do nothing to it. You don't need to doctor it. You don't need to rephrase it. The truth is the truth, but they do too much to it. And when you tamper with certain things, like it's almost like a math problem. If you change one variable, you come to a different answer. They're changing too many variables and getting the answers that they desire. So that's how I believe, I, I feel like just hear them out. Hear his evidence. If he is wrongfully, I mean, if, if he's rightfully convicted, hear him out and then just exclude that. Now we can check that off. We heard that issue and we could take that off the table. Sir, you're still rightfully in prison. But the thing is, when you bring up justifiable um you bring up justifiable things that should be heard. They don't. They refuse to hear them. Why are you refusing to hear this stuff? That's because, you know, some corner, something's been cut, something's been added, something's been taken out, something just ain't right. Because the truth needs no manipulation. With chronic dental issues that have led to significant weight loss, it has been denied you know, his much needed thyroid medications because of the state of Louisiana says they cannot obtain certain medications. Now, he's also wow. on another hunger strike, right? Because mm -hmm. conditions in Allen Hunt Correctional Center have not improved. Mr. Miller is engaging in a hunger strike that began on February the 23rd of 20... Oh, I commend him. A hunger strike. Yes. We need attention to the ways these systems are being run. They're not, they're not humane, I'm telling you. You wouldn't even want your dog to live in these systems. But we want humans because we've passed judgment that they deserve this. There could be a many people that deserve it, but until every single person that's in prison deserves it, you can't punish in that way because you could be that one person that does not deserve it, but you're living in that conditions as if you did do, you know, what they claim you did. 23, that's a week ago now, right? Now to bring awareness to his and all wow. his neglect abuse at the hands of the Louisiana penile system. Not just Louisiana, like, let me go back Florida to the DLC. And this is like all, all over they America DOCs. On behalf of the Miller family, it's an ongoing campaign to have justice served. Lisa Jackson, publicist of C Murder, and Stephen Johnson, manager for Corey Miller C Murder, are requesting the release of information to mm -hmm. the public about Corey and his current situation at Allen 
Khan Correctional Center. We are asking Kim Kardashian, right, as the prison reform legal team represent Mr. Miller to help bring... I wish I could call on Kim Kardashian or someone like that, but we ain't got no... We ain't got no resources. I've been fighting this battle for Mr. Marcello, hashtag free Marcello, for 21 years now. I ain't got a resource. I can't call on no Kim Kardashian, right? But the thing is that uh, even if they start bringing his story out, are people going to listen and believe it? Because, I don't know, possibly they will because when it comes to, you know, the poster child, Kim Kardashian, they you know, people would jump on board at that point. But just him getting his story out, because like now, I'm putting my story out about my husband being wrongfully convicted, excessively sentenced. Um, and especially when I do it through my short shelf, where a lot of people are watching, I get nothing but judgment. I get nothing but, oh, ain't no way. Oh, he had to... And if I do talk about injustice, they're like, yeah, whatever. They, he shouldn't have did what he did. So it justifies every mistreatment because he shouldn't have did what he did. But he didn't even do it. Like, you're not even listening to that piece. If he didn't do it, it okay, so we get it. If he did it, he deserves it. But if he didn't do it, does he deserve it? And you're still telling me, yes, he deserves it. How does that make sense? He deserves it if he did it, and he deserves it if he did it? Immediate public awareness to court, the entire situation, wrongful conviction from the state of Louisiana, the state of Louisiana suppression of evidence, humane, inhumane treatment conditions in prisons in his house. It is imperative now, more than ever, that a quick strategic move is made as his health has significantly declined due to the prison system humane inhumane condition mm. and he is not getting proper medical treatment for some and while we on that note i got a video about beat the heat challenge where we were challenging florida um lawmakers to do five minutes in a florida doc simulated sale there is no ac the, the water, the, it's a whole bunch of stuff that make it in here. Okay, so the concept of this is going to be inverted. So the highlights are going to be the darkest most point on the picture. And the shadows are going to be the lightest most part. So I'm trying to do it. I want to do it in black and gold. So that is the purpose of this black board. Once again, this is the picture of my daughter that I'm doing. She wants to hang up. That's the picture. But in Florida, and I'm sure in Louisiana, I don't know if they have AC or not, but Florida don't. It is a hot, it is sweltering hot. And people are dying of heat stroke or getting sick from heat stroke just from the, the, the weather. And, you know, we have more hot months than cool months. So we challenged these um, lawmakers and half of them was like, there's no AC in prison. Like they didn't even know. They don't care. But we were asking them to do five minutes and what you're sentencing and holding, upholding people being lifetimes in and a lot of them couldn't even do five minutes girl unfortunately we have disturbing visual and written information about mr miller's situation and um okay now i'm gonna scroll to find this, a picture you know, of my granddaughter story we to talked draw. to you know his rep we talked to uh master p oh, okay. you know last year about it and we, we, we covered the story on numerous occasions and you know, it's a lot. It's a lot that goes into the story. Now, what they're asking for, and I'll put the link at the top line of the description box, is for you to go to the purpleunion.org, and pretty much that's Prisoners Union for Reform. Mm -hmm. And um, 
It's an organization, I guess, if you want to help out, you can go there. The link will be at the top line. I'm going to have to go check them out. I never heard of them. On the description box. But we've been on this, you know, from the start. You know, uh, because it's one of those things where it's like, okay, was justice really served? There are a lot of inconsistencies, I think, with the witnesses, from what I can remember. And, um, you know, testimony being recanted. Put and a little crown on her. They will force a witness to testify they, the way they want them to. I'm not saying they did do that in every case, but if they want to, they will force that witness to testify in the manner they want it to. They want them to, just like Marcello's so-called victim slash witnesses wanted no parts of the case. And without them, they couldn't have convicted Marcello. These dudes ran off from Florida to another state and ignored subpoenas, thought court they had passed, court they did pass. And by court date passing, the way it should have played out, is that they didn't show up to press charges against Marcello. Charges would have been dropped against Marcello, and I wouldn't have threw away 21 years of my life fighting for him. Or 21 years of his life wouldn't have been thrown away in prison. Or 21 years of money growing up without her father and having a hole in her heart so because cute. her father missing. Uh, all those wouldn't have been thrown away had they just... They were supposed to let him go. That's the photo there was shoot no one idea of her. Maybe we Instead, can find something there. His own public defender says, but wait, 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 wait. Before you let my client go, let me grant me money for travel, food, hotel to go out of town and subpoena them in person so that they can come and testify against my client. That's what they did. <laughs> and when they came, they had completely different stories. They couldn't remember the stories. And just like the money, the affidavit didn't even, in, it didn't even line up. They said Marcello allegedly robbed them of $80. Marcello was searched, only had 60 on him. The police gave back the written affidavit and told them to amend it and put 60 because that aligns with Marcello. They initialed it and put a smiley face. They made that ish stick. Girl, I'm out of time, but y'all free Marcello and free C Mer. That's what it is. I'm out here waiting to come out like to come out the stone. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish reviewing um, this video I was doing from the other, other day about C murder and what's going on with him. Girl, that video did pretty good. So I guess y'all wanna go ahead and got to say, girl. Okay guys, so as usual, go ahead and check out the first part of this video. I will link it in the description box. If it ain't there, it's coming, girl, cause I gotta fix my links. I just record and upload and then I go back and fix my links. Um, and where we left off with this video, it is devastating news just leaked about Master P's brother, C Murder. So let's jump right back into it. Oh, the description box is I think this is the one. Mm -hmm. Pretty much that's prison. This is the one I'm gonna draw. That is too and, cute. Um, it's an organization, I guess, if you want to help out, you can go there. The link will be at the top line of the description box. But we've been on this, you know, from the start. Yeah. You know, uh, because it's one of those things where it's like, okay, is. was justice really served? There are a lot of inconsistencies, I think, with the witnesses, from what I can remember. And, um, you know, testimonies being recanted. And it's been a while, about 20 something years now. So it's like, all you want is to fight for justice. Now, if this person did what they, you know, said that he did, then I'm sure there's an appropriate penalty that, you know, is, you know, you know, uh, chosen by the Louisiana system and chosen by the judge, you know, for people to serve. We see it all the time. No, I don't think it's all. Well, I, I wouldn't put so much trust in the judge and the system like that, that they would 
choose the appropriate sometimes they choose the appropriate sentence and sometimes they don't um it is known that sentences are not equal that's why there's um i can't remember his name right now but they had the equal justice initiative because for the same crime you can do different time frames. It's supposed to be a crime, basically a charge. Um, that would be like if you went in a store and they charge certain groups of people a certain amount for the same item. And then another group of people went in the store and they charge a different amount for a different item. Um, that's how you can have people serving on substance charges, serving life, and then you can have people that demurk somebody and get less time. That is because there is no equal, um, justice is not equal. So that's, that's, so I wouldn't put so much trust that they, you know, put it for the right so cute. sentence. Because the, the sentence should reflect the crime that you um, did. A lot of people are over sentenced. Um, in the case of murking somebody, <sighs> It could be life, but then there's people that actually get like twenty something years, which does actually make me salty when I when I hear those twenty to twenty five year sentences for someone not even being alive anymore, and then my husband he got forty years and it's for an attempted alleged robbery of 80 i mean 60 dollars and if y'all watch my channel then y'all know why i say that i say that because the police gave them their affidavits back and told them to amend it because the amount that they wrote did not line up with how much my husband the suspect had on him so to make it more aligned so that um they can actually um pin this charge to him they had them amended. But yeah, I wouldn't put too much. Don't give them too much. This is him interrupting right now. I ain't gonna get this video done now. Hello, this is a free call from... <laughs> All right, I'll be back, y'all. free call, press zero to refuse. Yeah. It's right, all my shit. <laughs> y'all, I don't know if y'all heard that. He called in the middle when I was recording that that um video, but basically they just had did a shakedown of the whole unit, and he was saying how they rammed sacked his stuff. That's what he was talking about, y'all. I'm alright. I was up here recording the video. Where you at? Okay, excuse me, guys. He calls. I have to answer his call, but it, it's at random times. That was that free. Um, GTL gives you one five-minute free call per week. So I guess, you know, it's better than nothing. So those that don't get money on their books can at least get that one free phone call. But let's jump right back into this. Always just for some people because I think the system is flawed in a lot of ways. But, hey, it's the system that we're in, right? But definitely my flawed. observation and perspective of it feels like that he definitely has a case here. He definitely has a case. It almost seemed like they were just looking for somebody to pin this. What's this? Yawning you know, all in the background. <laughs> on oh, yeah. his lyrics in court. The fact that he was named C. Murder. Obviously now that sounds logical. Now he needs to be someone that'll be on somebody's um, jury. Th those are the type of jurors you know, need. Those that think deeper than, you know, a lot of people feel like whatever the courts bring to you, it got to be right. It comes from the, the mouth of God. Like, no, just because they said it don't mean that it's true doesn't mean that it's right just because they arrested this person doesn't mean it's the right person arrested that's the whole purpose and point in a trial and like i said the truth the 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 verdict trial the purpose in a trial is to come to a verdict the verdict means truth what is the truth in the case 
right? And the truth needs no manipulation. You don't need to fumble and change things and hide things and suppress things. You don't need to do none of that because the truth is the truth is the truth. Just let it go. Let it play out in court. Out that situation, you know, at all. So, yeah, they're asking, you know, for everyone's help. Right then, like I said, the link will be at the top line. It takes a village. The description box. I'll make it sure really that does. somebody uh, does a write up on hiphopun.com. You cannot get somebody released from a wrongful conviction on your own. Trust me, I've been 21 years trying to do it. It doesn't work. You need a community behind you. You know, about this particular um, press release and this new, new press release, it just came out. That I'm sure it hit the media. You know, if it didn't already, it probably hit it tomorrow, the next couple of days, that, you know, he's, he's fading fast. That's what the title says. He is fading fast. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm not really, you know, astute to thyroid issues and whatnot. Um, so if you're, you know, know about that, leave, you know, comments, what that can affect with you. Mm-hmm. Um, then on hunger strike. you got certain dental issues, and you can't get that treated. You know, that's not good because we all know that the teeth, you know, teeth are connected to other things, and you know when the teeth start going bad, you start having dental issues, and you can't get them, you know, corrected. Certain times people can die. You Healthcare in prisons are very poor as well. Y'all know is there's a lot of stories told about that. The horror stories of going to the doctor inside those prisons, and I I don't remember what I was reading. I don't know, I can't remember, but they were like, are these the doctors and the nurses that basically um, were not accepted in society so they go work in the prisons? Like, that is not the health care right there. Certainly, you know, infection or something's not addressed, you definitely can pass away you know, from a tooth infection or something like that. So it's definitely important yeah. that that you know and there is many ex offenders that say that no matter what is wrong with you like Rajiva the ruler was saying they always assume because you're an offender or ex offender that you're lying so no matter what you come with oh my arms falling off oh this this that they take it as yeah go go sit down like they barely they basically give you an ibuprofen and tell you to you know keep it moving like that ain't health care that both things get handled and you want to see you know this is what you want you want to when you got guy like me and jay and people uh kim kardashian that are fighting mm-hmm. for prison reform this is what you want to see prison want to reform see now involved. yes and not just because he's a big name but the big name, you know, is a trickle down effect to the smaller name. So if you can come out and help him, then it's like the smaller guys can now. Mike know, and that's the thing. You see how they talk about his case. That's only because of who he is and whose brother he is. Um, the average Joe or the average Marcello do not get talked about. Nobody knows their their nobody knows their name. So nobody even knows that they're gone. And guess what? nobody cares so that's how they're able to do these wrongful convictions because these are the people that nobody cares about you know these are the throwaways of society to them not to us the loved ones but that's and nobody keeps kicks up a fuss when certain people are um wrongfully convicted what can you do where do i go where who can i tell who gonna correct this situation there's nowhere to go there's no one to run to so you know what i mean but in see in his case he basically can get a spotlight so i don't know i don't understand like what is the hold up in his case if he do have kim kardashian who have gotten people out that are guilty of their crimes like what is the hold up with him so i don't know maybe soon he will be you know being released or whatever not sure oh you know and i think i really do you know think you know hopefully that's the goal people to latch up to this and do something for this for more publicity yeah like that's a lot of people doing the black community yeah it happens the same preacher did he say that lives. Yeah. The same lawyers pop up just for the publicity and the money out of the situation. 
Meanwhile, did you hear that? They do. They run to the spotlight. It's like basically when some injustice happens, they run to the spotlight. But injustice, you already know, is happening in our communities all the time. Why aren't you trying to dig and find these issues and find the people you can help on a daily basis? Like, why does it have to get big in the news and the media before you take action and before we march? All right, guys, my aunt is back out the stove, so I got to go. All right, here's your girl, Cadillac. That's what it is. It's your girl, Cadillac. Yes, I'm Cadillac Dixon. I'm the drama light prison wife. I'm the legally blind artist that is rapping and painting for justice. <sighs> Hoping, girl, to see justice before all fades to black. And probably before the rest of my hair turn gray, girl. Like, all these little grays coming out. Like, for real. Get them home. I'm stressing. Anyways, y'all already know. It's almost I, four in the morning. Once it's girl. released, y'all will know that um, basically today I had um, tried to go to work, girl, but get on my work shift. But as soon as I went out to the car, my car wouldn't start. So I ended up calling my manager. She was like, take the day off, um, do whatever you got to do. Can't do nothing right now. Girl, broke. I'm like, I'm broke, broke, broker than any unfunny joke. And my dad's not here to even look at the car. So I, I, that, that thing, that is, is just sitting out front, girl. So I decided let's go ahead and make the best of today. Y'all know lately I have been reviewing um, the story of Corey Miller, a.k.a. C. Murder, who is basically doing a hunger strike um, to bring attention to the conditions in Louisiana DOC. <laughs> that was an accident. It was Louisiana. <laughs> I know Florida is because my husband is wrongfully convicted and excessively sentenced in the state of Florida. He is 21 years in on his wrongful conviction, so they got plenty of time out of him. The best years of his life and the best years of my life fighting to try to free him. Um, the way I picture it, and by me being an artist, girl, when I get me some time, my, my fight right now is to get my time back. So I got to get off this workshop. But um, once I get me some time, I want to illustrate some things. So what I see um, of me fighting for Marcho, I see like, Basically, like, he's over, like, he's fell into a huge, like, hole. You can see the hole, the the, the um, rock layers or something around the edge and rocks just falling down. And he's fell over the edge. And I'm reaching down, just struggling, struggling to hold on to him, to pull him, to pull him. All his body weight, all, you know, I'm not as strong. I'm a strong woman, girl. But I'm not as strong, so I'm trying to hold his body weight up, and I'm trying to keep my footing to keep from falling over into the hole with him. And it's like, that's what I want to illustrate this is. Fighting a run for conviction is like dang near impossible, girl. Uh, a lot of air cut on right now, and it's making plenty of noise. Let me cut that off, even though it's a hot... And you know when I get hot, I think about the Beat the Heat Challenge that we did here in Florida to bring attention to the lawmakers that, girl, y'all ain't got AC up in them Florida uh, prisons and people are falling out, getting sick. Sharpen my um, pencil again. I'll be right back. <laughs> it's bad. And we just asked them to do five minutes in something that they are sentencing people lifetimes to be in. And my husband is wrongfully in this situation. So, girl, uh, let me link that in the box and let me cut this air off real quick. So I did cut it off, so hopefully soon it will just turn off. But um, that was a long intro in, but basically can't go to work. So I said, let me go ahead and finish on these series. So I was talking about C murder, right? And I really don't know his story that well, you know? So I said, let me just start doing some research, some background, watching some videos, getting some um, context to why he's saying that he's wrongfully convicted. Um, because that's what I desire for people to do in the case of my husband, Marcello, hashtag free Marcello, um, is to 
not just write me off when I say he's wrongfully convicted and excessively sentenced and then you plug your ears in like, no, no, don't hear no more because he got to have done what he's, what they said he did. Girl, listen to all aspects of the case and then make a judgment or, you know what I mean? So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to figure out, you know, pieces of the case, get some background. Let's see, let's hear it. Like I said in uh, my last videos, hear him out. If he's rightfully convicted, then you'd be like, okay, sir, you still rightfully convicted. If he's wrongfully convicted, how do you ever expect a wrongful conviction story to be broken if you will not listen to what is brought forth? So I started listening to the vi this video here, um, Hip Hop Uncensored. I love them. So let's listen to them a little bit. Industry, go down in the description box and get you a picture of this right okay. now. And now for our feature presentation. Oh, Sam, we're going all the way in today on this Thursday. I want to encourage everybody to hit the like button. Make sure that you share. Hit, hit the this like button. Video. I'm going to link their video in my description box and um, like and share mine and theirs as well. Let's get the story out. It's not just C. Murder, it's not just Marcello Jackson. There are plenty of our young black men and, and other men wrongfully convicted and women wrongfully convicted, but for the most part, it's young black men. And doing time in these prisons when, I mean, baby, they'll be better off at home with their families. Like, Marcello could have been more utilized at home helping raise our daughter and now granddaughter than being a bed filler. Girl, there was this other one I watched. I love it. If I knew his name, I would give him a shout out about it, but I'm going to review his video too. He said that they get, they get bread per head. They lay in a bed. Girl, that is so genius. And that's for sure. They, they, they getting paid off of Marcello being wrongfully in that prison, but See, they, they, they think the benefit is better for him to be there, but the benefit for society would have been for him to be at home with his family. That's why a lot of the issues are happening in our society. We have all these fatherless children. Like, for real, like, that could solve a bigger issue. Like, he would have been better off, and for society, he would have been better off at home with his family than doing time in a prison bed. Sam, man, the other day we both read a story on uh, C murder, man. I mean, and um, one witness recanted their testimony, and that was a big thing, and everybody thought it was getting out. But now a second witness has came forward and recanted their testimony, and now it's even moved to the uh, you know stage where C murder's lawyer is now asking for this charge to be overturned. Now, um. Darnell Jordan, the second key witness in C Murder's case, had recanted his testimony um, according to the Times Best Pain, you know, I guess it's a publication down there. Now Jordan claims uh, the detectives coerced him to identify C Murder as the shooter. That was the first one. Now, did you hear that? He said that the one of the witnesses said that they were coerced to testify that C Murder was the actual shooter in the case. And I like in that to Marcello's case, that's exactly what happened in now Marcello is not incarcerated wrongfully for murder. He's not. He's incarcerated wrongfully for an attempted robbery of eighty, I mean sixty dollars. I gotta link some videos so you can understand that. But basically the police told them folks what to write on the affidavit. And when they wrote the wrong thing, they gave the um, affidavit back to them and told them to amend it and make it the amount that truly lines up with what Marcello had on his person. So that's what Marcello is in for. An attempted robbery of 80, I mean $60. And when they give you attempted robbery, Florida stacks charges. They try oh, to um, one act. They try to get all the charges that they can out of that one act. Um, and but you know, no matter what, Marcello's charges were stacked. But they um, 
charge them concurrently. So you're basically serving on all charges at the same time for the, you know, for the slew of charges that they gave you. But like I said before, when trial came around, the people that alleged that they were robbed of this 80, I mean, $60, after the crime happened, they returned right back to the club that they claimed that Marcello had robbed them from. Um, they said they had to drink to um, be able to, I guess, um, deal with what was going on. They had to drink. They already said they had been there drinking, and they sobered up quickly and was able to ID Marcello. So there is no ID witnesses in Marcello's case, but the people that are alleging that Marcello stole the 80, I mean $60. They even lied and said, the police lied, the, the everybody lied and said that there are no cameras um, at the club, so yeah, there was no way this. to pull the cameras to see whether Marcello was at that club. If he wasn't there, there's no way he could have committed that alleged robbery of 80, I mean $60. So the police lied and said that they... Okay, that one part, so that's why they hid the surveillance cameras at that club from Marcello because that could have proved his innocence. That could have proved that he was not there. That is why they lied and said that a club slash hotel did not have surveillance cameras in the parking lot. Now, I found an article that says years later, they had a robbery in the parking lot of the same club and they found their suspect through the surveillance cameras. So had they released those surveillance tapes that of that night, they could have viewed it and seen in fact that Marcello was not at that club. That's why they suppressed those tapes because anything that was in favor for Marcello, they held back. Anything that wasn't in favor, which really ain't nothing, it's forced um, confessions, basically. Not confessions, because a confession would be from the alleged, um, uh, what you call that, defendant. No, it wasn't a confession. False, um, dang, I can't think of the right name, but statements, witness statements from the victim slash witnesses. That was coerced. That was forced. Them people didn't want nothing to do with this case until Marcello's own public defender. Let me tell you. Okay, let me let let me let it keep going. I'm drawing. I don't already said what I had to say. Let me keep going. But they should have released there, the tapes. Which that was a lie. They couldn't have seen Marcello there because the pathway that the police said that they seen Marcello there is obstructed by trees. It's not a straight pathway. It curves. It goes like this. And as it curves, there's a row of trees there. You can't see straight down that street. But, you know, some police, I guess, got superpowers. And they were able to see through. They were first able to see hundreds of feet away. And I and I identify Marcello from hundreds of feet away. And they also were able to see through obstructions. So they lied. That's a lie. It's a bold-faced lie. Um, but nobody is willing to um, investigate or uncover those lies but me, you know. But nobody's listening as I recite everything that I know about the case, you know. Um, so the trial had passed, and these two guys, which were the only ones to press the charges, did not show up to court. Now, the reason they didn't show up to court is because they themselves actually should have been brought up on charges. But so they can cover their own asses, they basically ran off. They didn't want nothing to do with the case because they tied to this alleged case in a different way. They tied to it, and they should have been charged as well. But instead, they marked them as being victims and being robbed. Okay, so now you're just completely taking whatever part you played in this, and you're 
tossing it off onto somebody else like a hot potato, basically. I will find some videos to link in the description box if you want to learn more about the background of the story. But anyways, they didn't come to court. They moved away from Florida. Now, somebody that's allegedly robbed you of 60, I mean, $80, you were scared for your life. Do you run to another state? No, you come to court and you make sure that this person is prosecuted. No, when court date came, these two guys ran off and moved to two different states. And Marcello's own public defender said, hold on, wait, before you hit that desk and let my client go, judge, can I get granted money? to go out of town to try to subpoena these two in person to get them here to testify against my client. Girl, so I've been looking for those witnesses to come back and recant. Like, though they were known drug abusers and alcoholics. And I've been praying that Possibly since so much time has passed that at least one of them would have a freaking heart. Like, Oops. basically, your testimony, the only thing that they had and your testimonies didn't even line up. That's why y'all were lying all over the place because y'all didn't know what to say. Y'all were trying to remember what they told y'all to say. And y'all would call it lie after freaking lie after freaking lie. And I kept thinking they may have a heart. These, they were at the time, Marcello was the youngest. Marcello was only 19. I think they would have been 20 or 21. But 20 or 21, knowing that I put somebody away in From prison. From 20 um, so to he's about to be 42. He life, has been in Florida years. DLC. Um, once he was arrested at 19. Life can take you many different ways. One could have sobered up. I actually researched these guys, and one has a rap sheet from here to there that is very closely tied with um, substances and drinking and stuff like that. Though they would not let that be introduced in Marcello's case. They would not allow substances to be introduced in that case, but it's a clear known fact that one of them that claimed Marcello robbed them of 60, I mean, $80, has a long substance abuse history and has been arrested for several things um, tied to that. But yet they said that was a bold face, like you can't introduce none of that. But I've been praying that one of them could have gotten their selves together, their lives together, and come back and tell the truth. These are tell money the hands how holding how they forced you to write that affidavit. Tell the truth how Marcello's public defender came out of town to Vermont from Orlando and knocked on your door and forced you to take that subpoena when you ignored five other subpoenas prior. Please come, like, re I've been waiting on that recant recantation. Girl, for real. Like, let's get to the truth. Let's get to the truth. So I, first of all, that that's a red flag for somebody to come okay. back and recant and see Murder's um, case that he is not the one that pulled the um, trigger. Girl, I mean, you got to look into that's it. Sweet. I don't know. As what it is, it's your girl Cadillac. Yes, I'm Cadillac Dixon. Draw my life prison wife. Like a sick side by side. Artist that is rapping and painting for justice. <gasps> Hoping, girl, to see justice before all face to black and before all my hair fake the gray girl. Like, help me get them home. I'm stressing. Anyways, y'all know I was up there reviewing the case of Corey Miller, a.k.a. C. Murder, and I was um going into looking into this case. What I want y'all to do for my husband, girl, my little husband. Free this Marcello, one is hashtag nice. Free Marcello. Look at his case. I linked a lot of videos down in the description box that kind of tell the background of the story, whatever. So now okay. let's get back to this video so now those that two I are... was reviewing. I don't have the paint, uncensored. so we're it is just from doing years the ago, outline I right to go now. Because I don't really know C Murder's case like that, but I want to review the facts 
And I'm going to compare because I know this is a my lot last about piece for tonight. Um, I really don't know what I'm going to do the with this. System, legal system, but a lot um, of that. Like what I design I'm going to do. But it's going to be for Miss Prince's OG birthday. Prison, right? She's an Easter baby. been a prison wife for 21 plus years. But not just a prison wife. I'm a prison wife to a wrongfully convicted man. Which again, I feel back. like it's harder when your husband is wrongfully convicted. If he was rightfully convicted, I could have took several seats years ago and just sat down and did my time in another way with him but by him being wrongfully convicted i gotta fight till i get him free right trying to put the pieces of my family back together to get him back man i'm gonna do whatever because i made this vow that i will stay with him forever and i ain't gonna stop it till the moment we together yeah it's your girl cadillac anyways back into the video oh yeah part one of this review will be linked in the description box, girl. No ads. Make sure that you follow us on social media. Also, okay, let me skip forward like to the part we were at. On this Thursday, you want to encourage everybody to hit the like button. We call C murder, man. You know what I mean? And um, one witness, we can't take that testimony, and that was a big thing, and everybody oh, thought we that one. Now, the second witness has came forward. Two witnesses, the recanted. You know, stage where C murder's lawyer is now asking for this charge to be overturned. Now, um, Darnell Jordan, the second key witness in C murder's case, had recanted his testimony. Um, according to the Times, Pennsylvania, you know, uh, this is a publication down there. Now, Jordan claims uh, the detectives coerced him to identify C murder as the shooter. That was the first one, the first uh, witness that recanted said the same thing. He says, I am certain. Okay, that whole first part of this video was me um, talking about how basically they force the witnesses to testify in the manner that they want them to. So now two people are coming forward, both witnesses, both key witnesses um, that helped convict C murder. They're coming back. One recanted and now two recanted. And this was actually four years ago that I'm finding this video from. So both have recanted at this point. Um, and what's crazy is I don't understand how a person's testimony can get you convicted. But when the same person, person testifies that you really didn't do it, I had to say it. They don't take that. Like... That's like, a, that's hypocritical. How could you take the word of the person, definitely he did it, and convict and take somebody's full life, and not just, in a wrongful conviction does not only just um, affect the wrongfully convicted, it affects the whole freaking family. The whole family goes to jail um, with that person. Well, unless, you know, those family members that usually jump ship and don't hold you down from day one, Marcello had a bunch of them, but like me, I've been pulled through the, the mud through this wrongful conviction with Marcello. So I'm doing time just as well as he doing time, you know, and his daughter definitely has done time. We raised our daughter together through prison visits for the last 21 plus years all over the state of Florida. Florida is tall is and beautiful. wide and everywhere. I have been everywhere with my husband. That following him around the state it costs plenty of money those phone calls are expensive mm. as jail and i mean but i did it all so that we could raise our daughter together my our, our daughter does not know her father being free at all he was snatched out of our daughter's life when she was it's about to be exactly 21 years ago in 2002 oh. the week before easter my husband went out and bought her Easter dress and never got to see her in it because the week following, he went to his rigged up trial and lost. Don't know how he lost when they ain't had no evidence, no fingerprints, no DNA, not even the weapon they charged him with. They ain't recovered that. They ain't got nothing. Then you got two witnesses that lie on the witness stand and conflict with each other. You had three officers whose testimonies conflict. And one of the officers, so with C. Murder, I'm, I mean, two people coming back and recanting. Like, why are they recanting? Why are they 
you know, so, I mean, you have to look at it, whether, I mean, he did it or didn't, you're never going to get to that conclusion if you don't look at the pieces, the evidence that's brought forward. And Corey Miller did not shoot Steve Thomas. George said in a letter written to the 24th Judicial Court, Master Pete talked about it. But saying, man, what do you think about this situation, man? A brother pretty much, it appears, is in jail, falsely accused. Well, I mean, it is, it's 100% he was falsely accused. You have two people, two main witnesses, two few witnesses that has a brother like the rest of his life, 16 years and counting now, hunger strike. All the just the mistreatment we see was going on is painful. Sixteen so years at the time. You just watched his brother's just terrible outcome. It's clear that he's innocent and he's still sick. Now, I did not realize, girl, y'all know I've been fighting for my husband for the last twenty one plus years. My YouTube channel is about to it was created to break the story of my husband's wrongful conviction. Almost 10 years ago. You can check the date on this channel. This channel is almost 10 years old. I also had a um, channel that I had prior to this. I had a whole rap career trying to break the story of my husband. I do plenty of art. I do plenty of things to try to break the story of my husband's wrongful conviction. And something was laid on my heart when I heard about um, C. Murder doing the hunger strike something was laid on my heart to just cover the story i never thought anything of it but when i did cover it i seen that part one and part two actually took off and did really well and then i was getting comments that people were like usually i get hate comments i get nothing but hate nobody you know everybody oh you dumb a girl like move on with your life he probably did it like how 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 would you know if he probably did it if you know nothing about the case and you're not willing to even find anything about the case so i get plenty of hate comments but when i started getting comments saying that you're right oh my gosh i'm i'm sorry to hear that this happened to my loved one and this and that that started making me feel like wait a minute maybe i need to cover this this could be the avenue that actually gets me seen and heard because i've been hollering about this injustice for decades now and everybody has shut me down tuned me out um won't listen so that's why i'm i'm gonna go in on this case and maybe we'll find out together where he wrongfully or rightfully, I'm gonna uncover everything that I can, you know, and just continue to cover and give my perspective. See, the the most perspective you're gonna get is from the people that blindly believe the law and follow the law. Like, I mean, like, they just believe that it's being upheld in the right way. They believe they doing the right thing. No, they not. It's too much willing and dealing happening behind the freaking darn scenes. That, and of course, they don't want you to see that. Because if you seen that, then you would know that it's corrupt. And then you would also want, you know, cases to be looked into. They don't want that. There's plenty of wrongfully convicted people in prison that they would pretty much want to keep. <laughs> until death, you know what I mean? Until death does them part, girl. What if we still sit behind bar? It's, it, it's real, it's real eerie, it's scary. What, what do they have out against Corey Miller? I'm not even going to call him his rap name right now. What do they have out against Corey Miller? Because you, you read both of these people's statements, like you just read Donnell Jordan. I'm certain that Corey Miller did not shoot Stephen Oh, that looks like a... Certain. Which means he tail could so be a ponytail. But then when you start digging into it, and I remember. So the person that said that he did it, he certainly did do it, is now coming back saying that he certainly didn't do it. So I'm not sure how that works. Like, how could he be? Which one do you believe? Which statement do you believe from him? For you, the first um, gentleman who went out, he said that if he did not oh, go and, and testify against That's Corey right. Miller, that they would bring up a back charge. His son passed away or something uh, crazy, and it was his um, his baby mother's fault because she was underage. The rap was going to go on again. Okay. Uh, red flag. Hold on. 
he said that it was stated that one of the persons testified and pointed him out, said it was him because he was told that if he didn't, they would bring up charges against him with something else. It wasn't even in this case, but it has something else to do with it. I mean, not not to do with it, but it was something else that had to do with him, the um, the witness that's why I also said that I don't believe a witness. I believe a witness is actually somebody that is has no dog in the fight. It should never be anybody that, you know, they can gain off of pointing you out or they can lose off of, you know what I mean, of not pointing you out. That is not, that's playing a game. Justice is not supposed to be a game. And like I always say, the truth needs no manipulation. Like the truth, let it play out. Why are you touching it? Why are you, why are they doing that? Why are they threatening this man to um, either testify that yes, Corey Miller did it, or he's going to go to jail? Like leave the man alone. Let the man, if, if he's truthfully seen him do it, then why not let him come forward? And let him ID and let him do what he needs to do. If he if he is feeling, you know, the need, why are you forcing him into doing it? See that force and that coercion and that background. That's the background stuff you don't see that happens in these cases. And a lot of time that leads to wrongful convictions. I do have a video series of eleven reasons why wrongful convictions happen and why they last so freaking darn long and why it's so impossible girl to overturn because and it's several reasons and it's in the um description box check that out girl okay let's continue so they were going to set him up he was going to do a 10-year bid so he's looking at either doing 10 years behind bars or he's looking to take this and, and tell on Corey miller and put him behind bars you don't you, you it, they, they put us against each other. And that also happens when there's a co-defendant or in any type of case, they're going to put y'all right against each other. Whoever squeals first, girl, gets the deal first. Like I love to say, girl, y'all know I'm a, I'm a, I used to be a female rapper. <laughs> so I love to come up with sayings, but whoever squeals first gets the deal first. They will be putting you against each other. It is a game. It is not about justice. It is not about right or wrong. It is about a case open, and we need to close this case, girl. And it don't matter who, we can pit it on you. So right home, it should be noted that Corey Miller said he has no, he, he appreciate his brother's, um, his, 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 his um, how courageous he is, excuse me, right. to mm -hmm. come out and finally do this. He's not mad at this dude because he sees the situation he was in. So shout out to Corey Miller for even acknowledging and mm -hmm. realizing that, the power in that. This is fucked up all the way around, man. Let me get the fuck out of jail. At this point, but they're going to they do all the red tape and this, that. They're going to try to keep them in there. Trust and believe because at this point, it's like. And that part, it is so easy to get yourself into a life sentence. But it is so freaking darn hard to get your behind out. Like, it, it don't matter what they come with. They're still wanting to hold on to him. And in Marcello's case, it doesn't matter what I bring forward. They still want to hold on to him. Though, in both cases, which I did not realize that C. Murder and also Marcello Jackson were convicted in 2002. So, even that aligns. Marcello has done just as much time as C. Murder. Um, 21 years now, um, wrongful conviction. I know my husband's wrongfully convicted, but we're trying to figure out whether, you know, C. Murder is wrongfully convicted um, as well and cover the story and just, you know, let it be heard. Um, so I'm going to have to stop here, upload again, and then clear it off and then come back. But yeah, let's listen um, to the rest of this. Nope, we only got a few seconds. It's your girl, Cadillac. Thank you, guys. Okay, guys. As what it so, is, it is your girl, Cadillac. Yes, I'm Cadillac Dixon. I'm the drama like prison wife. I'm the right legally here. blind artist that is rapping and painting for justice. Where am I at? Stupid girl. 
to see justice before all things to blame. Okay, I'm at part six. My so I think girl, we're gonna like, stop. It's your girl, Cadillac. Anyways. So I just reviewed the first six of my um review of the case of C murder as I was drawing, working on some artwork that um hold on guys. Uh, okay, so that was just the part six of reviewing the case of Corey Miller. Um, I basically said I wanted, girl, ooh, that's part, okay. <laughs> that felt like them cop, them cop lights, girl. Okay, so as I was um, letting you guys listen and catch up on my playlist, and the reason I had that, let me just take this down because that ain't, that ain't working no more. We about to end this live soon. But the reason that I decided to do it this way now, y'all know that this YouTube channel is dedicated to breaking the story of my husband being wrongfully convicted and excessively sentenced in the state of Florida, right? That's the whole purpose and why I made this channel, the channel prior to that, that I made in 2008 when YouTube first began. That was the whole reason of having my Facebook that was the whole reason in my MySpace in 2006. Girl, that was the whole reason in me rapping, my whole rap career that I pursued. That's the whole reason. Like, girl, that's the reason. Trying to get my husband home, trying to break his case. Um, girl, I thought all of that. I don't forgot what I was, but what was the point? <laughs> oh, girl, it, I'm tired. It's almost five in the morning. <laughs> The point was that, um, okay, so I really take pride in my YouTube. My YouTube has been growing very slowly, but very showly, yes. Um, so finally, um, people are, it started, basically, it started breaking in 2020. I felt like he was coming home. It was a switch. It was people that, I have been saying this same story for years, years upon years, posting on Facebook, on everything, years upon years, and nobody cared. People tune me out. They plug up their ears. Girl, I don't want to hear it no more. Like, not, not another video about my... Uh, 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 please, girl. But I'm sorry. I got to... I'm the only one fighting for him, and I got to keep fighting until he comes home or until, you know how they say, uh, get rich or die trying. Get him home or die trying, girl. Like, that's that's it. So, um, basically, I, take, I was taking YouTube courses in 2020, and um, Sean Cannell, shots out to Sean Cannell. Yes, I love video ranking academy i love sean cannell i love uh, all of them basically i was taking youtube seriously i really honestly in 2020 when the world was shutting down girl i just graduated college like in the worst time you can think of so it threw me off my rocker i'm actually an artist that finally took her old self to school at 34 after my mother passed away, ba basically, I went right before she passed away. Um, she was graduating with her master's, and everybody looked over to my old ass and asked me what I was going to do, girl. I'm like, I'm old. What you think I'm going to do? I'm doing what I did. Like, girl. And then I said, okay, I'll go to school. Never meant it, but I enrolled. I took that first step just because my mama was going to call me on it. And then I got financial aid. And then first day of school came and I could not renege. So I'm like, girl. And then five years later, I finally graduate. Me and our, our daughter went to college together. We were college buddies, whatever. So I was trying to make my art career because I've been drawing since I was nine. Yep, I've been a struggling, starving artist since I was nine, girl. Ain't made it yet. But um, so I wanted to make my art career legit and get my graphic design degree. 
And basically the whole world shut down. So I just zoomed in on my YouTube, just trying to get him home. I actually watched two prison wives that I follow get their husbands home. Like basically during the same time, 2020, they came home. I thought it was like the great release. So I was like, yeah, let me get, because I had gave up hope. I did. I would never leave my husband, but I gave up hope that he would ever be in the free world again until like we're old, 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 like 60 something almost. Um, so I had given up, but something lit that spark and I started to fight again for my husband to come home and for his freedom. Um, I started taking YouTube courses because I was like, during the shutdown, like that first half, I was just creating, creating, creating. I had made this whole storybook um, about, you know, my husband case. I, I did it in a children's book format because I wanted his story to be so simple that anybody can see why he is wrongfully convicted. So it's like a children's book. So rather than I, I drew it and colored it in crayons, um, I went back in 2020 and did redid it all in Illustrator and it made it look, it looks like a real book. I also have a prison. This is a plug, girl. This is a plug. I got a prisoner's family magazine so that the hopes that the next wrongfully convicted person does not have the hard a time that I've had trying to break their they loved one's story. Um, I have a children's book that me and our daughter is working on called Daddy Daughter Dance. And it's basically the true story of our daughter wanting to go to the Daddy Daughter Dance, but she couldn't attend because her father was incarcerated. And she felt left out and alone because she was like, everybody has a father, everyone but me. And I had to explain to her, you have a father. He's just not here free. Right, girl, I didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it rhymed, girl. Okay. Girl, I see your little skills. <laughs> um, so... In one of the courses, Sean Cannell said, um, basically, you should release all different size videos. Long format video, short, this is before YouTube Shorts came out, short format video, um, you should do mid-size, you should do 10 minutes. 10 minutes was the average range that was great to start with. Um, but try 30 minutes, start lives, just try everything. And then there was this one video and they said, release a marathon. Like for your true ride or dies. Not everybody ain't gonna watch this marathon. No, they ain't. It's only your true, true supporters that's going to watch it. So they were saying to just group all the videos that you recorded into one super long video, super video for your super fan, right? So today, no, it wasn't today. It was the day before yesterday as I was at work. I was like, at first I was going to go into my video editing software, which girl, I don't want to edit. Like girl, it's too intensive to edit. Editing takes a lot of time. If you look at my first videos um, from like 2020, I used to edit every single last one and it would take me it could take me two to three days to create one video um, because I was Photoshopping each frame. I was editing the sound, any click, any noise. I was I was doing a team way got darn too much, <laughs> as I always do. Girl, didn't know when to stop, but I was not getting traction on those videos at all. Like all that work, and it was like I was pouring all my time and my labor down the drain, and still I was not getting the story of Mr. Marcello Jackson out. So one day I got irritated and said, Girl, I'm stopping editing. I ain't finna edit nothing else till folks start watching, girl. <laughs> um, so at first I was going to edit all all of them together basically in one long video. Like I did my Draw My Life series, I have them um, basically chopped up into segments. But then um, 
I basically have a drama life movie where I tell my life up into 2020 and I illustrated each frame. That one's really cool. Y'all can look for that if, um, or later I can go back and put that in the description box. But that one, Draw My Life, the movie is cute. Girl, I came into YouTube, back into YouTube with the bang in 2020. Um, but that video took me three three weeks to a month to edit. Um, my video, What is Project Reach the World? I can also link that in the description box. That is all my art forms, like cosmetology, my books, my illustrations, my paintings. It is everything, my hair sculptures, everything grouped together basically formulating something called Project Reach the World. That video took a month. It took a month to edit. So I was truly editing, but then it didn't prove to be profitable um, because I wasn't getting the views after spending the time. So the thought passed to edit this together. And I said, girl, no, <laughs> I ain't got time for that. Plus, my laptop going to bed, I ain't, it's, my devices are just not what they're supposed to be right now, which I need to get them in order because um, I got to get back on my graphic design grind for real. That's the whole purpose of what I went to school for, girl. Um, so the second thought was, why don't we listen to the playlist? And you can draw something because basically I have not been doing my art for a couple of weeks now, guys. I got all this unfinished artwork. I got money talking about, girl, ma, you ain't did my piece yet. I asked you a long time ago. And plus, me and money are readying for Miss Prince's first birthday party. And we were supposed to make the decorations. And now it is exactly, well, no, now it's a little less than a month from now. And I don't want to do it last minute. So we got to start designing her um artwork for her birthday. So I said, let's just do that and listen to the playlist. And that's where we got this video from. Um, I might do another one since I'm only at part six. Let me see, how many parts of this series do I have? Ooh, this hand going to bed, going to bed. Then I'm going to bed because it's 4.37 in the morning, dang. But it was worth it. I got to get up and me and the kids going to the theme park tomorrow. So how many parts is it? Oh, girl. There's several. It's one. <laughs> ah. And the last one, the one before the last one I did on live, that one got the least views. So that means people don't really watch my lives. But the other ones got a lot of views. So this one possibly may not get that many views because it's done through live. So I got one, two, three, six, seven, eight. Girl. Okay, eight more parts. So we possibly can do one more of these um, to finish the series. So this will be part one. Anybody, I've, I've seen that number go up from zero to one. So somebody popped in and then I seen y'all pop out. Then someone popped in. Now, I'm sorry if I wasn't able to do any chatting with you if you did leave a comment. Um, but I will through... Um, the comments under the video once I um, stop this one. I, I definitely, I try to comment back on everything, basically. I try my best to, girl. Um, but I can't see none of that scrolling as I'm, you know, drawing or whatever. But I don't think nobody did, girl. Now I'm just rambling at this point. So y'all know we about to go ahead and close this up. And... Hiss, your girl can lack. Like. <laughs>